All right, so I'm gonna do a little video update on my uh, low cost project. Uh, it's probably been like six or seven years I've had this thing, haven't worked on it much, but uh, I felt like working on it again for some reason. Started out with a silica donor and now is all Miata, as you can tell. Uh, this rear suspension uh, is roller now as of this weekend. Um, just welded the subframe in uh, with these two, like, I think this is one by two, which uh, is quite thick, but it's what I had, so I used it. Probably should have made it longer off the back so that there was something to weld to for the rest of the rear where the gas tank and stuff is going to go. Um, I kind of want to put the gas tank behind everything so that I can maybe fit a little bit of baggage area up there. I think I'm going to use motorcycle shocks. So the, uh, it's, I, I think it's going to have to be a push rod and the shock be inboard. I don't know yet though. And then, uh, so whatever space is left over will be space that I can do whatever with. Um, the upper mounts, like I said, are just the one by two welded into the one by one bar that goes across. Obviously more bracing will come in and then um, either either some tube from there up to the roll bar mount or possibly the actual like roll bar itself will come down to the back there and strengthen that up for the bottom. Um, there's the stock way that it works is this, this piece that bolts to the bottom of the subframe also bolts to the frame rails up in front in the Miata. So I took those front pieces and cut them up so that they're bolted in through here. So there's the stock black subframe uh, strengthening piece that's bolted. And then the front of it, which I flipped around and welded to the actual subframe and then welded to the, to the chassis, which is going to get gusseted underneath. Uh, I'm thinking that should be strong enough. Uh, also, run the braces from there out to the sides. So I'll probably get another one too from there. But uh, it seems strong enough to me. Also got to do the differential, uh, front differential mount, which I didn't want to get into until I knew where the transmission tunnel was going to be. Um, <laughs> I know that bottom mount doesn't look, you know, super solid, but I think with the gusset on the bottom, it should be all right since most of that load is going to be forward anyways. Uh, when the wheels are going forward, the subframe is going to be pushed that way, which is going to push forward in those. So it should all go out through there. It may lift up a little bit, but I think with the gusset in there, it should be all right. <clears throat> I mean, that's what Mazda used. Uh, let's see. I took it out of the welding table a while back. I thought the welding table, my uh, build table for the for the uh, chassis, which was this. I don't know if you can see it in the video, but there is a slight bow in the table itself. You probably can't see it. <clears throat> but it ended up, my chassis was not straight. Which I could probably fix the table, but I, I just put it on the concrete and used the concrete as a guide and ended up cutting this. Cutting, it was about the thickness of the weld that it needed to spread, so I just added this two inch piece in here and I'll weld all that up. Then I uh, redid the Aussie mods there, there, and uh, set it on the ground. It's supposed to have a five inch ride height, I think I set it for, but uh, I guess just with all the the bolts having a little bit of play and the bushings and stuff. It's about four and a half to the bottom of the frame rail right now, which I should be able to fix with the shock mount, just mounting the shock a little bit lower. But I do have a little bit of camber in there. I don't know if I'm supposed to have that or if just the alignment that was on it, on the car, when I took it apart, was put like that. I don't, I haven't looked at uh, any of the alignment specs in the subframe, I suppose I should set those to zero. But this, the right height was set with the bottom A-arm 
being level so from from that bolt to that bolt that bolt that one and that one should be a level line between the two that's how I decided that's where the right hat was going to be a lot of people just do a one by one steel on the, on the lower mounts that are removable I just decided to use the stock piece there that way uh, it's easily bolted in and out and the differential can be removed <clears throat> uh, for let's see the uh, engine I just dropped in there recently trying to figure out forward and aft where it should go um, side to side is obviously pretty easy just line up that crank bolt with the middle of the car I guess and I may push it over to the passenger side a little bit because I'm sure I could use the room over here for pedals and <clears throat> I don't really care about the passenger's feet all that much. But uh, I think I'm gonna notch, I'm gonna cut out there and make a little X brace here so the engine can sit back a few more inches. Um, I'm not sure how everybody usually ends up with the forward aft weight distribution, but I think generally they're heavier on the front. So I was just gonna try to move it back a little bit to compensate <clears throat> also I don't really want to build the extension for the shifter so I think it'll go back a couple more inches and then I'm gonna to have to put a little temporary floor in there and see where the shifter is gonna end up and if that's all right and then level it all up and start on engine mounts I think that's the next thing I gotta do after I place it just engine mounts and then and then the H tubes verticals around the transmission and then the cage all around transmission for a drive shaft and everything. And uh figure out if how the drive shaft's gonna come out. Maybe it'll be maybe it'll be removing the differential to get the drive shaft out, but I don't know yet. And then I do need to buy front suspension parts. I'm gonna buy jacks from uh what is it, Kinetic up in Oregon and buy his suspension parts and get that started. But uh, this is a 1.8 from a 94 Miata that I tore apart, and that is a Torsen limited slip in the back, which I bought that whole car for like $1,000, drove it home, sold all the parts off, and I think I ended up making money, and I kept the whole drivetrain. The wheels are from a BMW E30 that I parted out. They're, those are NK92s, and the other two are <clears throat> some brand called Superlight, but the the uh backspace offset all the measurements are almost exactly the same i think the offset between the two pair is like three millimeters difference so they're pretty much exactly the same so those are what i'll use until i can buy some that are made for it <clears throat> you can see the camber there a little bit And here's the other parts that I have, the rest of the car. Um, wiring harness in that box. Steering column. Still got the key in there. And um, all the brakes, upper control arms, which are not getting used. Uh, front spindles. Uh, that's the fuel pump, I think, right there. This is the pedal set off that E30 I parted out. I figured I'd keep that possibly be useful so I have the pedal set from the E30 I have a pedal set from first Celica I took apart for this project and I have the pedal set from the Miata so hopefully I can come up with something decent out of all three of those uh, filler neck old radiator that is trash but it came out of that Miata um, exhaust parts all this like, blower fan motor that I'm not going to use but then there's e-brake stuff down there and uh, there's a bunch of stuff I still have all the cruise control parts too, so I could use that if I really wanted to. And then more roller sets of tires. I have both the Miata steering rack back there and one from a Triumph Spitfire, I think, which is a hell of a lot smaller. So if I can make that work, I think uh, I might try to go with that instead. And I don't have to depower it because they're already manual. I'll have to look up the steering ratios and see which one is shorter. Also have 
the that driveline brace. I think the PPF is what it's called or something. Uh, I think I'm going to cut the front and rear ends off of it to just use them to make the differential and transmission mounts probably. Also for ride height, I did it for a 205-50R15 and those boards are the exact size of those tires as far as I can tell from getting measurements on the line. And these tires which are, I can't remember what are they, a uh, 205-60-14 which I think are almost exactly the same diameter. Um, and with the 205-50-15, I may actually just go a little bit wider than that because I think I'm going to end up make, having some of those custom steel wheels made like the flat track guys use and just getting the exact measurements I want and like make them a little bit wider and fit something wider on there. But, uh, yeah. So I guess the only questions right now I would have is, uh, do, you th do you think uh, those engine mounts are good enough or am I going to die? Uh, and then the ride height, I guess, I, I, I probably just need to align it and uh, finish that off with the, uh, the coilover mounts and get that to where the camber is minimal at ride height. And then... Uh, <clears throat> Where are you guys putting your engine? How are you deciding um, forward and rear? I, I think I'm just going to notch that out a little bit and move it back a couple inches and say, okay, that's good. And then over a little bit, I don't know, an inch, something like that. And then just park it there, level it, and start making engine mounts. And then uh, hopefully next video we'll have engine mounts and uh, start and work on transmission tunnel or something like that. Maybe suspension if I can afford to buy the parts, but uh, that's where it is now. <clears throat> Thanks for watching.